The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its, at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to support my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi, then Herod called the Magi secretly, and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search, search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to invite all our we worshipers forward for a blessing. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Happy New Year. Hey. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Are you going to give me 10? Oh, my good. No, double high five. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's like 50. All right. Okay, well, I hope you all have a wonderful time. Yeah, is it fun? Well, may God bless you and protect you from all harm. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and the church says, Amen. Hey, have a good time. You're three. You're five. I'm five. You're five? I'm five. <laughs> okay, have a good time. Have a good time. That's your buddy? Oh, that's nice. Where are you going? Oh, you're going over there? All right. Oh, very good. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Our parish has a long and noble tradition of talking about stewardship, 
But I bet if you talk to 10 people, you would get 10 different definitions of stewardship. What do you think? And so today, I want to talk about stewardship in its deepest sense. And the second reading points to it. You know, each human being at his or her baptism received a call to be a steward. Now, a steward of what? A steward of the mysteries of God. Now, in the Old Testament, the word steward means a person entrusted by the king to take care of the palace. And so each one of us as Christians is called by God to take care of a mystery entrusted to each one of us quite particularly. And I like to refer to this mystery as this. May I have the first slide, please? The quest. Now, not quest diagnostics where you get your blood work done. I'm talking about a deep down quest, a search for what is true, what is one, what is good, what is beautiful, a quest that dwells deep in the human heart. And so I'd like to share with you this definition of a quest. Following a deep down desire for something you know to be true, but are still not sure what it is yet. And so, my friends, stewardship would be easy if, we're only, if it were only filling out a covenant card. That would be easy. But stewardship is much deeper than that. It's the reason God created you. And every human being has a rather specific quest that helps to build a church and to preach the gospel. Now, I'd like to share with you a word that comes from Wales. Imagine an Italian quoting a Welsh word, but here it is. Maybe you know it. It's pronounced hiraith altogether. And it's a very beautiful word, and it's kind of a kissing cousin to this notion of quest. You see, hiraith is not homesickness, because homesickness, homesickness is too weak a word for hiraith. Hiraith is a longing of the soul to come home. A longing of the soul to come home. And I think that this desire for home is especially important today in an age of such tremendous instability. You know, many times I've been at hospice house at someone's deathbed, and I see the dying person reaching out to someone who's approaching them, calling them home. And there's a look of ecstasy on the dying person's face. And sometimes, when I'm sitting alone at home, maybe with a cup of tea, I think about my memories of home. You know, my mom was a tremendous homemaker, and I smell the homemade bread, and I smell the eggplant parmesan baking in the oven. And those memories give me a tremendous sense of assurance. Do you have those memories too? I think as we get older, those memories become stronger. I want to go home. And this desire for home is our quest. Now this notion of having a quest is something that's pervasive in the folklore of Western history. You know, you can think about King Arthur and the Holy Grail. 
You know, the knights of the round table, inspired by the Holy Spirit, desired to find the very cup Jesus used at the Last Supper. Now, what does the cup symbolize? The cup symbolizes true life, eternal life. And they gave their life in the pursuit of that sacred cup. Now, many of you may have seen the musical, The Man of La Mancha. Have you seen that, some of you? Remember Don Quixote and Father Al? I mean, Don Quixote and, and Sancho Panza. And remember, Don Quixote was possessed by this notion of having a quest, a quest to right wrongs, to seek justice, to protect the dignity of all people. And he expressed that desire for a quest in a very famous song. Do you remember it? To dream the impossible dream. No, to dream the impossible dream. And every human being at their baptism has been given a dream to follow, a dream to make manifest for the good of the church and for the good of the world. And that is the deepest meaning of stewardship. You are stewards of that mystery. And the number one job of a pastor is to awaken that quest in his parishioners and to encourage them to be bold in sharing God's love. And so today in the gospel, we heard about three wise men who were captivated by a quest. Now, these men were astrologers. They were intellectuals and they were studying the skies, and they saw a star that had a special quality that they couldn't quite put their finger on. Now, I suppose they could have written in their book, well, that's a, an interesting cosmic experience, you know, it's real cosmic, man. They could have done that. But instead, they packed up their belongings and they set out on a very long and arduous quest. Now, they had no intellectual proof to back up this intuition in their heart. And furthermore, they were not familiar with Jewish messianic predictions. So indeed, they set out on that journey kind of following a hunch. And my friends, the way we discover our quest is through prayer. You know, when we come to Mass, it's time to put distractions aside and start listening to the quest God has given to you. It's not so much about listening to me. You know, probably we could train an intelligent monkey to do what I do. That's not the point. But the point is to listen to your heart and ask the Lord to reveal the reason for your existence. And so, what is prayer? Well, we turn to the prophet Elijah. The God taught Elijah how to listen. And Elijah did not find God in the fire or the hurricane or the earthquake. He found God's voice in a quiet whisper. And my friends, sometimes we stay so busy that we don't listen to our quest. Could you imagine being on your deathbed and asking yourself the question, gosh, I wonder what my quest was. You know, I was so busy I kept myself so distracted that I never listened. I never dared to follow that star, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause, as Don Quixote saying. 
And so, my friends, prayer is listening for the still, small voice of God, listening with the ear of our hearts. You know, I say that at every Mass, and it's not just a Father Al affectation, of which there are many, by the way, but it's very profound to listen to your heart. Because I believe with all my soul that each one of you has been created for a purpose. Amen? Do you believe that? And that stewardship, time, talent, treasure, sure, that's part of the process of stewardship. But the fundamental stewardship is knowing my quest. Now, the wise men saw the star and they were stirred by it, and I suppose they could have sat down and had dinner and watched TV that night. But they moved on it. And so it's not enough to come to Mass to listen. That's only half the equation at best. Then we have to have the courage to respond to the quest. And my friends, that takes a very important T word trust. Not only do we have to listen to the quest that's percolating in our heart, but we have to pray for the trust to respond to it. Now, the wise men didn't know it, but that stirring in their heart was whom? The Holy Spirit. You see, my friends, the Holy Spirit doesn't use these words to communicate. The Holy Spirit communicates through the stirrings of our heart. And so, my friends, what stirs you? What moves you? What gets you out of bed in the morning? You are stewards of that gift. You are stewards of that stirring in your heart. The Holy Spirit who gives you wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of God. To pay attention to what stirs your heart. You see, my friends, life is too deep for words. So don't try to describe it. Rather, Live it. Your life, the meaning of your life, is too deep for words. And God is calling you to be stewards of that mystery. So, my friends, enlightenment is the journey back from the head to the heart. And so all of us are magi today. Maybe we're not going to trek across the desert like Lawrence of Arabia. But every Mass is an invitation to make a journey from the head to the heart. Do you dare to listen to the deepest stirrings of your soul? And in order to make this journey from head to heart, we need courage. We are called to be bold. To be bold. So, my friends, if I had a microphone like Phil Donahue, I would go out in the assembly and ask you, what's your quest? Now, you can't say something like this, love God. Because the quest is not generic. It's like if you get married, how are you going to take care of your wife? Oh, I'm going to love her. Well, come back and see me in a couple of years, buddy. <laughs> if you cannot clearly and specifically identify your quest, this homily is for you to go deeper and to be bold, trusting that God has given you a stewardship. 
the stewardship of the mystery of Christ. And so, my friends, I'd like us to conclude with just a moment of silence to contemplate the three wise men who found the fruit of their quest by looking at a vulnerable baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. And may their courage inspire us to listen and to respond.